Hey everybody, welcome back to the last book spotlight of July for our summer reading. And we are going to be doing Tarzan of the Apes. There might be some monkeys behind me right now. I don't know. Sherilyn, is there some monkeys? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so as you guys are probably getting about tired of the book spotlights, Tarzan and the Apes by Edgar Rice Burroughs, and the back of the book says, Set amid the vibrant colors and sounds of the African jungle, this classic work, rich in suspense and action, has beckoned generations of readers on a glorious journey to romance and pure adventure. This is the story of the ape man Tarzan raised in the wild by the great ape Kala, and how she learns the secrets of the jungle to survive, how to talk with the animals, swing through the trees, and fight the great predators. As Tarzan grows up, he makes many friends, including Tantor the elephant and Numa the lion. When this paradise is invaded by white men, Tarzan's life changes, for in this group is Jane, the first white woman he has ever seen. Speaking directly to our childhood fantasies, this exhilarating work takes us to that faraway place in our minds where dreams prevail and where we too can be masters of our own domain. If you're like me and Sherilyn, growing up we watched Tarzan, the Disney movie. You watched it too, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, so, a person would probably be thinking a lot of that, but this Tarzan didn't do the branch surfing like <laughs> the one in, he swung more like George of the Jungle. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm referencing Disney too much. <laughs> but my dad actually read these books when he was a kid. Okay, the first five paragraphs. I heard this story from one who had no business to tell it to me, or to any other. I may credit the seductive influence of an old vintage upon the narrator for the beginning of it, and my own skeptical incredulity during the days that followed for the balance of the strange tale. When my, my convival host discovered that he had told me so much, and that I was prone to doubtfulness, his foolish pride assumed the task the old vintage had commenced. And so he unearthed written evidence in the form of a musty manuscript and dry official records of the British Colonial Office to support many of the salient features of his remarkable narrative. I do not say the story is true, for I did not witness the happenings which it portrays, but the fact that in the telling of it, you, to you, I have taken fictitious names for the principal characters quite sufficiently evidences the sincerity of my own beliefs that it may be true. <laughs> The yellow mildewed pages of the diary of a man long dead and the records of the colonial office dovetail perfectly with the narrative of my confival host. And so I give you the story as I painstakingly pieced it out from these various agencies. If you do not find it credible, you will at least be as one with me in acknowledging that it is unique, remarkable, and interesting. So that is the last. Some of the other books that we considered using for this was The Jungle Book, all of these are in the classics, The Yearling, Call of the Wild, White Fang, and The Red Pony. So that concludes the book spotlight for this months of summer reading. See you next time. I don't know how hard I'm having to go. I mean, you can always clip it in if you want. I mean, this is true. <laughs>